Hi there, my name is Neil Stridham. I'm a fourth year kinesiology student at Queen's University. I chose kinesiology because I have a love for sciences and for sports and I'm interested in the human body and so that was about my knowledge of the kinesiology program going into it. And so once I arrived I found that the culture of the kinesiology program is just that it's a nice small program, everyone knows everyone and everybody is willing to help out and I felt the Queen's is a great school and would be a great fit for me. Well, in my program, and so in kinesiology, I find that it's very, very hands-on. We have a lot of um, labs and things like that where you get a lot of kind of practical experience. So an example off the top of my head that uh, I've done would be like the athletic therapy mini stream, which essentially I work with, with the basketball team doing their um, injury rehab and their uh, taping, things like that. And uh, with that being said, there's the whole other side where it's a lot of sports psychology, sports sociology, things like that, um, where again, you get a lot of opportunities to be very hands-on with the professors working and really engaging with the material. Yeah, so I mean, to be successful in the program, you really need to just be open to all the different types of learning and all the different types of uh, education that you will receive. So, I mean, I came in with a big science background thinking it was gonna be just science, but I found that some of the things I enjoyed the most was the sports psychology section of the degree that you get exposed to and even the sports sociology section and things like that which is something that i didn't really expect show the school that you're well-rounded um, and so a love for sports is a big thing that they do look for um, although not required but uh, even and when i say sports i mean very broadly any types of physical activity and uh, just a passion for living a healthy lifestyle, I think that that is definitely something that um, they look out for because it's something that they really preach in the course itself. Typically with kinesiology, a lot of people that you'll see will be going into rehab sciences. And so that'd be your physiotherapy, your occupational therapy, um, your athletic therapy, things like that. However, it is not fair to think that that is the only things you can do with a kinesiology degree. Um, personally, I would like to go to medical school, but with the degree that I have, it is, uh, it's pretty easy to um, go down the path of wanting to become a professor, doing graduate work. As I mentioned, there's all the different subfields like sports psychology, sports sociology, and all the things that I mentioned before. Um, and throughout, definitely, I mentioned earlier that I did the athletic therapy internship. That is only one of the opportunities available. There's also strength and conditioning. There's a research one, and then there's one that is working with um, individuals who have disabilities in a, a rehabilitation gym. And so, yeah, I definitely, I suggest picking one of those and just going full on in it because the experiences you get could change your outlook on so many things and it could really help for your uh, career in the future, absolutely. So when you're in high school, one thing that they don't require but is definitely helpful is physics. And so the reason for that is one of the, pre or the core courses that you have to take from first year and second year is biomechanics and that has a pretty large physics component. Most of it is around physics 11, a little bit of physics 12 but I would definitely suggest taking that just so you have the background coming into it. And that's one thing that they don't really, they don't really let you know that. So when you get there, um, a lot of your courses are already laid out for you. And that's just because the program is fairly specialized. However, you do, do get some freedom to pick elective courses as well. And for me, again, as I said earlier, I would suggest definitely going and taking some of those internship courses, your athletic therapy, strength and conditioning, your research, um, and working in the revved up gym, which is the rehabilitation gym. And other than that, there's other courses for, I've mentioned the cardiometabolic assessment lab, that is KNPE 355. And that is a great course to take because it has so many um, lessons in there that will give a different perspective on healthcare and all different types of healthcare fields. Um, and kind of the way that they use different strategies in cardiometabolic assessments. 
Other courses that I would suggest taking is definitely try all of the different uh, specialties before deciding where you want to aim most of your courses. I thought I was going to be all exercise physiology, like the biology, um, biomechanics, like all that type of stuff. But one of the things that I found from trying all different types of courses is that sports psychology is one of my biggest interests. And so this has resulted in me um, doing an honors thesis in sports psychology and a summer research project and hopefully getting a paper published in sports psychology. So definitely when you're picking your courses, try them all and sample them all because you never know what you're going to absolutely love. Studying for kinesiology, a big thing because it's so practically based is just getting that practice and really learning hands-on for me is what I found, I found the best. So for example, you take anatomy in second year and for me going to, into the cadaver lab and actually working with the specimens and looking at them, that was the best way that I was able to study and really able to learn. And so I think with the nature of a lot of the courses, it's just getting out there and doing it and repetition. I wish I realized in first year that this is different for everybody, but I can't study with music. And I really thought I could, but that's something that I kind of had to, kind of had to learn for myself. And I also wish I realized how good it is to go and study at the library. Um, the library is just a really quiet place, and it's just really, it helps you focus. And it takes a three-hour project and helps you focus in and do it in two hours. But I think that learning to study for this program really is just kind of trial and error and figuring out what works for you. And one last point on that, I do think that uh, using your friends, because it's such a close-knit community, like studying with your friends and um, working in a group to figure things out for a lot of people works really, really well. Some of the uh, pros of living in residence is you're able to meet so many people, and I met people that I ended up living with um, outside of residence and I met people that I've you know become friends with and I think I'm gonna stay friends with so that is something that has been really good just because you're all there you're all in it together. Residence can be a little bit tricky sometimes to, to navigate for some people and a little bit tricky um, academically because there's always people who always want to go hang out so it's hard to have that self-discipline but I also do know a lot of people who didn't live in residence and they also made an equal amount of friends and they also did fantastic so Residence isn't the be all end all, but it definitely is. A, it definitely is a great thing. Being in kinesiology, my uh, go-to spot is the SKHS building, or we call it the SKIS. And people in the program in all years are always there hanging out, and so it's really great to be able to go. And when I was in first year, I can go and I can bump into a fourth year, and I can ask questions and just really chat with them and get to know everybody. But for the school as a whole, probably the uh, the JDAC has some nice spots, and in the arc. Then the arc is the gym and there's like a food, like a cafeteria there kind of. And so there's a lot of spots where people go and they hang out. And some really good ones uh, within the faculty are like winter adapted games, motion ball, queens for the boys, um, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, another big one that's outside of the faculty is Queen's First Aid. Um, that's the medical first responder team, so take a look in September. I think the biggest thing about making friends in university is just finding that group that you click with. Honestly, Frosh Week or uh, Orientation Week is what it's called now is um, probably the biggest thing for me or was the biggest thing for me because everyone's in it together and everyone's going to all these events together no one really knows anyone else and so that's where we meet so many different people but that isn't the only way to do it and i think that that's a common misconception a, a big way that i met a lot of my friends was actually through school and through my academics so i mentioned that doing group study sessions definitely a big way that i that i studied and that's also a big way that i made friends So we do have in the JDUC, there is a kind of a student wellness center, and so they have a ton of resources available there, as well as uh, nurses, and I think there's usually a doctor in there as well for kind of uh, medical support. In terms of academics, there are academic advisors for each uh, faculty, and there's also the SAS in the library which is uh, helps you with your uh, writing and a ton of other stuff as well. So. There's a lot of academic resources available there. And 
In terms of mental health resources, there's a few available on campus as well, and you can get that through uh, the Student Wellness Center. So definitely, if you need anything, don't like feel free to just reach out to them. And in terms of uh, financial support, I know that the school has a uh, department that's dedicated to that type of stuff. And in my experience, reaching out to any department in the school, um, they're always helpful and they'll always point you in the right direction. The other thing is that there's a lot of clubs on campus that provide support and that provide um, resources for absolutely anything and everything that you can think of. Another big thing is for out of province. Um, I'm an out of province student and I actually came to Queens not knowing too many people and I was pretty surprised to find that so many people are out of province and so a big thing that I learned is you know you're not alone and once you meet those people um, and you get the chatting then you're like okay like I'm in I'm in this with other people I'm not alone in this and everything's gonna be okay. I wish that I was a little bit more organized with my schoolwork and realizing that, wow, okay, like this is university now. It's not, it's not high school schoolwork anymore. And I think that I would just tell myself to don't stress out over the little things because at the end of the day, everything works out. And at the end of the day, if something little goes wrong in your academics, in uh, your social life, things like that, everything will work itself out and um, seizing every single opportunity, I think that's what I would tell my first year self here because first year is definitely a totally different experience than second, third or fourth year. It's, you know, your, your first time at university. And in terms of my program, I think that the program does a really great job of kind of guiding the first years. They help guide me and I'm sure they help guide a ton of other people as well. And uh, so, yes, that's what, uh, that's that's what I would say.